and go. Woo. And 60. Oh, listen to that. Woo -wee. And 100. For your visual pleasure today, we're dressing for the occasion when in Rome. Today we have something very special as we do probably one of our very last muscle car reviews ever. This is the 2022 Dodge Charger Scat Pack Hemi Orange and a very special car. Smoke show is the color here. How appropriate. Very showy today. I'm in a mood. Who would have ever thought that they would do this several years ago when this car came out? That we would have this wide body thing with 11 inch wide wheels, 20 by 11 wheels, 305 section tires. This is crazy stuff, but they had to with all the horsepower that this had when the Hellcat first came out. Now, this is available on the 392. But look at this thing, it's crazy. It's just bulging with muscles, bulging with in your face style. Is that not automotive porn? I mean, just look at it. You got a stripe down the hood, over the roof, over the deck lid, big deck lid spoiler. This is a car that is just doing it old school with the cubic inches right there on the fender. Not very many cars these days talk about cubic inches under the hood. They're all about liters, liters, liters. And look at the bumblebee. Isn't that just charming? <laughs> I mean, why the bumblebee? Somebody out there tell me why the bumblebee? I mean, I know the answer, but I want to see how smart you all are. And right up front on the grill, it says Scat Pack right there. Dodge has, they've always had these almost Marvel comic type logos. The Demon, the Bumblebee, the Duster, the um, other shit. <laughs> other shit I can't remember. It's really cool. When I was growing up here in California, back in high school, if you were a car guy back in that era, it was all about muscle cars. It was all about the cruising. And, and you know, we would go out and just cruise up and down the main strip of town, look for a place to uh, hang out, pop the hoods open, show off the motor. And this engine, you know, 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. It's got this eight-speed automatic. It's, uh, it's just, a nice balance of what's in between, between the smaller V8 that comes in this car and the fire-breathing Hellcat with its seven and 800 horsepower numbers that you can get with that motor. This is, of all the years that I've driven this car, I, I thought this is just the nice sweet spot in the middle. But, you know, it's an engine, it's a car, just like in high school, you know, we would find ourselves at some point during the, end of the cruising night we'd be in a parking lot somewhere everybody'd have their hoods open and showing off what they've got and uh you know this is a motor that you can just totally show off because it looks so good and you know back then i had friends that had like chevy chevelles dodge chargers camaros i had a 67 mustang with a big block 390 v8 in it Holly 750 double pumper on an aluminum torquer intake with headers <laughs> getting into the weeds. But you know, a car like this really fills that same spot, you know, and of course not very many high school kids can afford a car like this today, but in probably five or 10 years they can. A car like this will be in their hands doing the same thing, but you know, cruising just isn't what it was back, back in the muscle car era. and. You know, back then we'd be cruising around on a day or a night like this and it would smell like gasoline and, you know, the engine would be getting angry because it's hot and it would want to overheat. Muscle cars are just notorious for not wanting to run and idle and be comfortable in traffic stop and go. And so cruising was a lot of work, you know, and the motor would die and then you get stuck on the side of the road trying to start it and, oh, you know. We always remember the good times, but it was uh, sometimes just a, a freakish nightmare to take a car out on a cruise for the night. But a car like this today, you know, it's quiet, it's comfortable, it doesn't smell like gas. And 
Vassal with 485 horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque under the hood, an eight-speed automatic. So this thing just comfortably rolls along no matter what you're doing with it, whether you're just cruising through town or uh, whether you're out on the highway or whether you're off getting ready to race somebody. But, uh, and it really gets attention, you know? Just the, the time we've had with it on this road trip, driving through town here in Palm Springs, uh, I had to roll the window up today for our shoot, you know, so that uh, we could get a word in edgewise without people wanting to talk to us. Yeah, cruising for the action. Ah, listen to that. Ah, it's like a speedboat out on that lake out there. Now, if you watch my video, you know the question I always like to ask is how does it go? So we're out here in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody around. And go. Woo! And 60. Oh, listen to that. Woo! -wee! And 100. Woo! That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> That's what 485 horsepower does. And it doesn't smell like gas. Did you listen to that? Ah. And of course, this has got launch control and all of the other tech goodies that I could be dialing up here to get that to go even faster. This is just kind of, we're out on a road trip, but um, that's what your beck and call anytime you want in this car. Life is good. As far as fuel economy goes, this is rated at 15 city, 24 highway and 18 combined. And I got 20 miles of the gallon on this road trip. And that's because it has a lot of different ways to save fuel. It's got variable cylinder management. It can dial back to four cylinders like right now. And when you don't need all that extra power, if you're just kind of cruising along at speed. And so that's really amazing. Now, you know, granted compared to the hybrid cars we can get today, it still sucks fuel, but compared to my Mustang I had in high school, that got seven city, 11 highway. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Having driven this car now on this road trip from Phoenix to Palm Springs and back for quite a while, quite a few hundred miles, one big difference between this car and the muscle cars of the past is that this is comfortable and it's quiet and it has a nice ride. When I would drive my Mustang from Sacramento to Los Angeles for a car show, that thing was loud. It would beat you to death. The seats were uncomfortable. By the time I got to LA, I was freaking wiped out. And this is a car that I could literally sit in these chairs all day long. And it's just so comfortable. And a lot of that goes to this modern interior. Not only do we have all the sound deadening, but this is so loaded with really the best of what they've ever put together for the Charger. We've got the Alcantara and leather seats, a nice suede headliner, and with the Hemi Orange Scat Pack, I've got the orange stitching everywhere. It's a really nice looking interior, carbon fiber trim, heated and ventilated seats. These seats are some of the best chairs in the industry, in my opinion. Every time I get a Dodge or a Chrysler product with these seats, I'm always a happy boy. It's just comfortable. I guess that's the end point. This is an interior that even in this wintry road trip has been warm and comfortable with the heated seats. Even the back seat has heated seats. That's pretty slick. And when it comes to listening to music, this has the top end Harman Kardon audio system, 19 speakers. And the coolest thing about this is you have a full screen with performance pages down there so that you can get in there and adjust the suspension, adjust the steering, the exhaust, the engine. You can really customize the drive modes with the performance pages in addition to all of the other play toys that this has to really bring the muscle car into the modern era. It's stuff that I really only dreamed about back in the 80s when I was driving my vintage muscle cars having the ability to just adjust suspension on the fly, adjust steering and the sound of your engine. Cruising along at 70 miles an hour, this is pretty quiet. 
This has been averaging in the mid 60s on the decibel meter, just as we roll along, non-scientific. It's not the quietest car in the business, but we are on a noisy road. It's a lot quieter than any of the 60s and 70s muscle cars ever were. And this chassis, even on an irregular road like this, is just so sharp and precise. It bears repeating that this chassis is originally derived from Mercedes-Benz. The LX and then the LD platform that this particular car is built on is derived from the Mercedes-Benz E-Class back when Mercedes-Benz owned Chrysler. And so it really democratized that level of German engineering down to the American car level for front engine rear drive driving. And we still get to have that today. It's just a nice, precise chassis. It's got independent front rear suspension. And it's really always been a joy to drive. Things are changing in the automotive landscape. Things are changing in how we get our energy and things are going to be changing big time in how we power our cars. Just look around us. What you see right out there is our automotive future. Whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, that's reality, folks. Cars like this are not long for this earth. And so I suspect uh, this is gonna be a classic someday. These are gonna be getting big money at auctions like Barrett Jackson, the last of the big V8s. And uh, it's, it kind of makes me a little teary-eyed if I'm honest. Uh, I've driven some great electric cars that are fast, they're fun to drive, uh, they'll snap your neck, but there's just something about the roar of a gasoline engine that shifting and, and pushing you into the seat, the tire smoke, all of it, that's just very romantic for a car guy. But the reality is it doesn't fit into the future. And so while I'm very excited about all of the electric cars to come, it looks like a lot of fun. Dodge has shown us what the electric muscle car future looks like and it looks really good, but I have to be honest, I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss this. So there you go for our little road trip. Uh, you can see our latest video right there. This is our last video of 2022, so it's a nice way to close this out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.